you're here as a general manager, yeah. the general manager. Does your lens change at all uh, with that distinction compared to various other times you've been here? Yes. Yeah, the lens does change. I think, you know, the other times I've been here, really, I was a, I was a pro director. You know, so the task as a pro director at a college combine, you know, is, is definitely different. I was always involved in the college side. So there was an element of interviewing players and, and things of that nature. Um, but you're kind of more here getting the pulse of like what's going on in the pro world, you know, during that time. And so, you know, when you come now as a general manager, there's free agency, obviously. So there's that pro element. There's the college scouting element. There's the interview element. There's the formal interviews, you know, which is a different type of interview than um, what I was used to do, which is more the informal stuff. Um, so, and, and then just organizationally, like, you know, there's still that, there's still an organization that's being run. So um, all the elements that, everything that's still going on back in Vegas, um, you know, we're still new. So there's still an element of hirings and all that stuff. So yeah, the scope, the lens, the lens is definitely a lot wider now, you know, so it's fun though. At New England, you were so locked in on the Patriots, so I'm curious, you didn't really get to know the inner workings of the Raiders till you got here. What has pleasantly surprised you? It's a good question, yeah. I think the thing that's pleasantly surprised me is you never know when you leave somewhere and you're going somewhere new, you don't know who's in the building, right? So you don't know who's working in all the different areas. And um, so it was a pleasant surprise just to see how many, I would say, hardworking, detail-oriented people that really take a lot of pride in their jobs. A lot of people that really take a lot of pride in being part of the Raiders organization, which is cool. Um, and so, yeah, it's, you know, you don't know what you're going to expect. And so to find a lot of people that love what they do, that are hardworking, that are smart, that are diligent, like that's refreshing because it, it gives you a lot more. It takes a little bit of weight off your shoulders, you know, when you know there's people there that you can count on. Um, so that's been awesome. You have technically three decisions to make on 50 year options coming up here in the next couple of months. I guess how close are those decisions and how much are they relevant or, or how much does it matter what happens in free agency, what happens in the draft in order to kind of weigh into those decisions? Yeah, I think I don't think like free agency in the draft really goes into those too much. I think they're all just on an individual, you know, individual basis. Um, I think the dates may second on those. So for me, like in this job, the one thing that I've learned is prioritizing tasks, you know, is like on a daily basis is huge. Um, and so from small to large. And so, you know, with that being at May 2nd, that's, you know, like uh, obviously it's part of the lens, but from a priority standpoint, it's, you know, it's something that's down the road that, you know, we'll get to at some point. Today, uh, Josh said that uh, Derek Carr, no doubt, will be the quarterback week one. Uh, what does that mean as far as extension talks and make it kind of a formality, or where, where does that stand right now? Yeah, I think, you know, Josh, I know Josh had that question. I saw the response. And, and so, you know, you know, that's the plan, right? <laughs> um, and, you know, it's been awesome getting to know Derek. Um, just a really conscientious, good person that loves football. And you can feel that when you talk to him. So that's really exciting. And so, you know, like what, like we talked about it, we're still in that, you know, in that. And, and Derek mentioned it, too. You know, we're in that business, you know, relationship phase where we're learning each other and, you know, and. Um, just personalities and creating a relationship. And so we're still working through that process. And as we work through those process processes, you know, those different things will come up. But um, right now we're just focused on building it. Really. With Derek still being your QB, what position group when you're looking at the draft do you feel like you need to bolster the most to really give him the best shot to succeed? Well, in terms of what we're looking for in the draft, free agency, the, the, really the entire team, I would say what we're looking at doing to do is build depth and competition. Like that's really, I think, a really important part of team building. Um, when you have competition through the top of your roster, through the bottom of your roster, and people are being pushed, um, like that's really uh, the focus. And I think when you build depth and competition throughout your team, you're naturally going to um, build position groups that have strengths um, that benefit, whether it's the quarterback, the offensive line, the running backs. Right, a pass rush benefits the corners. Corners benefit a pass rush. So, like all those different things fit together. So, our focus is about building depth and competition, like throughout the team, and that's that's that is the focus. As it relates to uh, Derek, uh, going back to your introductory press conference, you said, "Let's see where all the pieces fit." Do, does seeing where all the pieces fit require actually playing games and playing a season, or can you figure out where those pieces fit long term prior to that? 
Yeah, I think I mean it just it, it it depends on how they fit. I don't think I don't think there's necessarily a timetable on that. I don't think you know necessarily have to see three games or you know something to that extent. I think it's it's really more organic, you know. And I think in, and so I, I can't really put a timetable on it, but I would say there isn't a timetable on it to answer kind of answer your question. You know, it's like we don't I don't think we have to get through a certain number of games to know this or that. Now, could it take that? I mean, it could. Um, but I think we'll just, it's more of a, you know, there's, there's a feel to it. And, and there are, there are a lot of still dominoes that have to fall in terms of just the whole building of the team to really, I think, have a clear picture on it. I know when you first, you know, graduated from John Carroll, you were pursuing a, a coaching career. What like led that decision when you did transition to being an executive in 2010 and kind of going as a... <laughs> well, to be honest with you, I didn't even know scouting existed at that time. <laughs> <laughs> so like, I wasn't, that's not something like... You know, I knew I grew up in Northeast Ohio. I knew about football. I had been around football coaches my whole life. Um, and that was really the scope of my knowledge about like the bigger picture. And so um, to remain in football, I knew I had to coach. And so I got into coaching and that was kind of the process. When, when Josh um, gave me the opportunity to come up and interview for a scouting assistantship, that's the, really the first time I, I mean, you hear a scouting, but like I really didn't know what it was, what it entailed. And I had some opportunities to go back into coaching when I started my career in scouting, but I just really fell in love with it. Um, I started to have success in it. You know, I started to get more responsibility and and, um, and learn more about what it entailed and, and the whole team building process. And that, that's something that's for me, I fell in love with that process and that allowed me to kind of, you know, separate from the coaching world. The, uh, the team that's picking in front of you in the draft uh, this year, team that you're kind of familiar with in the Patriots like is that is that going to be kind of strategic of like maybe a lot of the same type of tendencies a lot of the same you know thought process that go into players kind of back to back in the draft there yeah um I, the way I would actually answer that is no I think that uh, we're gonna have um, they have their set of principles of what they want offensively or what they want defensively and Obviously, Josh was there for a long time, you know, so there is some offensive things that I know he values that, you know, we'll value here, but they might not value that anymore because they have, you know, who, what, they have their own offensive coaches that are going to have their own philosophy and same, same defensively. Like, you know, we have Pat um, and Pat has his own ideas and philosophies. And then as a group, as a whole, we have, you know, what we're going to look for in different positions. And so, no, I mean, um, I think we all want to find play people that love playing football, you know, and passionate about what they do. And so, you know, like, yeah, there's that, but I don't think like there's going to be any real specific crossover there. The holdovers uh, in your building, especially with your staff, for X amount of months was looking at this draft through the glasses of the Raiders and the sure. previous staff. Is that a, is, is, or do we make too much of, okay, all, now all of a sudden here comes you and some of your people that you're bringing into it, the coaching staff? The way they look at it is—is is that a big hurdle to clear, or less than what we sometimes? It's think? not a big hurdle to clear. Um, there was there was actually some crossover um, also in what they, uh, what Mike had in place, um, and what some of his scouting philosophies were. Um, and so there was some crossover there. So not the exact same, but not like a totally different language. Right. And so it's really a small hurdle. Like these guys, uh, you know, they've all scouted for a long time. Um, some, most of them have been in different systems, you know, during the course of their career. So, um, there, there's, there's more crossover, even in different systems, there's more crossover than you think. There is an element of understanding, right? This is what we look for, or these are the position specifics of a tight end. And so there's a teaching element, uh, but they're good football people and they've been around a long time, the staff that we have. And so it's really not that big of a hurdle, but Again, there is a teaching element to it. Bringing in Champ, uh, what was kind of the thought process uh, behind that? Yeah, well, you know, I met um, Champ interviewed me for my first job uh, in the NFL when I was a scouting assistant. And so um, I, I met Champ my first year um, while I was in Denver. And Champ just embodies a lot of the things that are important to me. Uh, very high attention to detail, has a very high standard for all work that's done, whether it's big or small. Um, he's really smart in terms of just football, big picture thinking. Uh, I know he's a good evaluator. Um, we have a level of trust and respect to each other. So 
he's really been like I can't even the 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 asset that he's been for us so far has been huge. Uh, when you have someone that you can um, say, hey, this is on your plate. You take care of it, and you know it's going to be taken care of to the standard that you um, also embody and to the detail that you want it to be. Uh, that's really valuable. Uh, Champ sees things and gets things done that I want to get done before I even know I need them to get done. Um, so you know, Champ's been really phenomenal in that way. And I think that relationship, even though we've went separate ways, which has been nice because he's seen different things and he's been with different staff, so he can bring an outside perspective. Um, it just, uh, it was a no brainer for me. Like even thinking before I had this opportunity, if this opportunity ever came, like Champ Kelly was always someone that was going to, I, I, I would hope would uh, be able to go on this journey with us. Um, Dave, uh, just in terms of building out the staff, coaching staff, personnel side, strength and condition, I'm sure, sure the decisions have been made there, but how do you kind of approach, you know, maybe keeping some people in place, like maybe, you know, Edgar Bennett, you know, or Dewan Daniels versus, you know, bringing in people that maybe you have a relationship with in the past? Yeah, well, I think, like, when you when you go into any of these new situations, it's um, there's an element of evaluating what you have, evaluating what you don't have. And sometimes evaluating what you don't have isn't necessarily an indictment of the people that are already in place. It just they might they just might not have that certain skill set in place there. You know, every organization's kind of structured differently. So I think you go in and you evaluate just you know individually what those people possess, what they bring, how um, their mindset fits with what your mindset is, um, and also though at the same time like maybe some of the things that don't fit. You know, they bring a different perspective. They've seen different things. They bring new, fresh ideas that um, that you don't, that you haven't been exposed to. So, I think it's 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 very much about figuring out who who fits again, both with you in terms of what you're looking for, and also um, you know people that can bring a fresh perspective. But you know, I would say the caveat to that is um, in this league. You know, not every person that let, is let go doesn't mean they're, they're not good at their job, you know, and, and that they're not highly qualified. It just might not be a fit for you or that skill set might be a skill set that somebody else has. And you're trying to diversify that. And so those are hard decisions. You know, they really are. But um, at the end of the day, you got to, you know, you got to make the decisions you think are best for the for the organization. In a normal year, you would have already known your roster, but you get here, the draft's coming, free agency. How are you splitting your time between prepping for the draft but also watching film on the guys you had? Not a lot of sleep. <laughs> That's for sure. Um, no, but it's a great point. Like learning the roster is the foundational piece of scouting. And so that took a lot of time and effort when you evaluate every single guy that's um, under contract and every free agent. I mean, those are a lot of players to evaluate along with all the new things that you you, you kind of get faced with when you – um, take over one of these positions or when you get placed in one of these positions. And so it's a ton of time management. Like I said, it's really prioritizing tasks. You know, I had certain things that I, I thought I wanted to do right away and I was gung ho about doing them. And then you take a step back and you're like, wait a minute, like that can be done two months from now, you know? And so there's a lot of that prioritizing and it's a lot of, it, it is like, it's a lot of getting up early, going to bed late, getting up, doing it again, doing it again, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I'm like, that's just what you have to do like when you get into this situation. And so um, it's a challenge, but it's it's fun at the same time. Were there any uh, surprises in that process of running a roster and, and things you didn't realize from the outside that you did not realize that you may have something more than you thought you did or vice versa? Yeah. Poorly <laughs> <laughs> word, word question. Um, <laughs> I would just say that I would say this. I would say... Um, yeah, there is, there's always, like, when you, um, you're going to always have maybe some inherent biases or non-biases, like, when you are entrenched in a team, right? Like, if you're with a certain organization for a long time, you can see players a certain way, right, wrong, or indifferent, and you can talk to someone else from another team, and they see them completely different. So I think just coming in, there, there was, you know, um, there were certain players I wasn't familiar with, you know, just because, like, they either hadn't been free agents, they hadn't been an RFA, um, they weren't on the pre, you, you know, you didn't watch them necessarily in the preseason. So um, there's certain players that you just aren't as familiar with that you learn about, you, you know, and there's, you find um, things that you like. You and Josh both name dropped Hunter Renfro in your opening presser. And today I asked him again, you know, what excites him. 
uh, what excites Josh about Hunter, and he said that when you look at Hunter, he, like, he doesn't scream pro bowler. What are you most excited about getting to know Hunter Renfro? Have you been able to start building that relationship with yeah, him? Yeah, we, we've, we spoke a few times. I know that the guy is highly competitive um, and loves football. So that's, you know, those are two really good traits um, that I know that he has. Um, you can watch his style of play. He's, you know, plays fearless. He plays hard. Um, he's really skilled, you know, in terms of catching the football, route running, and things like that. So, um, yeah, any guy that you watch that can one get open and then create after the catch, like those are, you know, those are good. Those are good players to have on your team. Um, so that would just, I think, his mentality and how he approaches the game. It seems uh, just from the outside looking in. I haven't got to really delve into, you know, the, that deeply on the, from a football standpoint, but. Um, you know, there's there's things you admire the way that he plays when you watch him on film. Alex Loder would, was drafted really at right tackle, got moved to right guard. A lot was thrown on his plate. Um, just on your evaluation of maybe of him or the offensive line, where do you see him kind of fitting in the offensive line? Does that change, or do you have to have that established going to the draft and free agency so mm -hmm. that you know where you're going to have to focus on? Yeah, I don't. It's a good question. I don't think you have to have it established like for free agency or for the draft. We're always going to just be focused on drafting good players, um, regardless of the position. Um, I think the one good thing about Alex uh, that not all rookies are afforded the opportunity to do is play a lot of games. And when you get a lot of play time as a rookie, uh, just like any of us in our first year uh, on a job, you learn, um, you know, you learn things that you're good at. You're, you learn things that you need to improve at. You kind of get exposed to things that you never even thought about. And so I think you know it's it's exciting to have a guy like Alex. Um, that's played a lot of football and ultimately like we'll, we'll see there's an evaluation we'll, just, we'll see where he fits and we're not going to pigeonhole him into saying he's this or he's that we're going to let him create an opportunity for himself and you know we'll, we'll, we'll be excited to um you know be able to work with him i think on, on both sides you know it's something that patrick graham you know he's, he's talked a lot about was you know being multiple on defense and not necessarily being like stuck to one front sure. and then with josh you know we've seen him you know the past three years with different quarterbacks kind of adjust from going from Tom to Cam. Uh, when, when you're kind of going into the draft process, does that, I guess, make it easier for you to just focus on maybe just going for talented players more so than somebody that has to fit this specific kind of scheme? Yeah, I think, you know, like being multiple and, and um, when you're multiple, you value versatility, right? And so I think, um, yeah, you look for just good football players, you know, and, and if you, if you can find a lot of good football players and then you play and you ask them to do what they do well, um, it definitely does make it easier instead of like, you know, I have to find this specific body type or, you know, this this um, specific skill set. It's like, well, we're going to just, it sounds simple, but we're just going to draft, try to draft good football players and then find what they do well and, and use them to the best of their ability. So to, to answer your question, yes, I think it makes it easier. Dave, Josh loves tight ends, and you got one of the best in Darren Waller. I'm just curious, as you watched his film, what stood out to you about him? He's explosive. Um, you know, he's a big man that runs very fast. Um, and and so, like, it's pretty unique for a guy that size to um, be as, as fast and explosive as, as Darren is. Um, and, and so... Again, it's the, the idea, we talked about it a little bit with Hunter, but people that can create explosive plays um, are so valuable um, because they can create chunk yardage, you know, and, and, and those, it's easier to move the ball down the field and get down to the to the end zone when, you know, you can do it in big chunks. And so, and, and, and then and also just an, an outstanding young man, you know, just, um, you know, hard worker. Um, I think, you know, everybody um, knows Darren and, and um, you know, his story. And I think it's, you know, just a remarkable, um, you know, his perseverance and, and what he's done uh, to get to where he's at is um, something to be admired. Um, and I know I admire him uh, just both as a person and as a player. And, you know, we're excited, uh, excited to have him. You and, uh, you and Josh have probably been asked about Derek's contract extension about 150 times already. Um, but Max Crosby could potentially uh, be in a situation where it might be time to do that too. Has there been any discussions with him or is there any prior prioritizing uh, that in this offseason? I think there's still there's a lot of big picture discussions that we have to have, um, and and um, and so as we're kind of you know going through free agency and then you're getting to the draft, I mean there's going to be some of those organic conversations that those big picture conversations that you're going to have, um, and, and you know I wouldn't say we're there yet, um, you, you know, and it's it's um, I know it's it's a question that 
everybody wants it. you know it's a curious it's a curious question I, I get i get that but we're just trying to take so many small bites right now like it's hiring a staff you know it's we had draft meetings before we got here and getting prepared for those and getting organized in those and executing those and then it's the combine and so um in due time you know we'll look at all those things and you know um again it's always good to have good players going into free agency i know las vegas and boston are totally two completely different cities but when you go come to las vegas what are kind of the big selling points that you feel excited about when you're trying to get free agents yeah well i think you know I think Raider, you know, the, the, the history of, of Raider football is exciting. Um, I think it's, a, again, it's a franchise. We mentioned in our press conference, it's a, it's a historic franchise. I think, you know, that's, I think that's an attractive thing. Um, when you talk about um, Las Vegas, obviously there's beautiful weather. Um, uh, it's warm all year round. We have a beautiful facility. Um, we have a new stadium. Um, you know, so I think, you know, all those things, there's um, a lot of things that, um, we have in place in terms of our um, facilities that allow football players to maximize their potential. And I think all players that, you know, players want to be their best. And when you can offer players uh, a chance to do that by, you know, your, your um, the facilities, your training facilities, all those different things that um, we have within our building that, you know, that's going to be an exciting thing for players to be able to go somewhere where they can maximize their abilities. Do you, do you sell the, uh, the state income tax being currently in free agency? I don't, I don't think, I don't know why you wouldn't. Um, <laughs> well, it was, was a little bit less in Massachusetts. Was, was yeah. <laughs> well, we haven't got to, you know, we're not allowed to start recruiting or anything like that yet. So, um, but, uh, you know, it'll be one of the bullet points, I'm sure. I know you, you've hit the ground running, but have you gotten a chance to get out into the community? And has, has your vision of Las Vegas changed at all since in and around Las Vegas? Yeah, I, I would say I have, I haven't got um, too far outside of the facility and back to the M hotel, oh, no. um, okay. you know, at this point. But um, uh, so we're, we're in the process. My wife's come out and looked at houses and those types of things. And so um, we're excited about it. You know, obviously there's, you know, people have come there. Uh, Las Vegas is a tourist destination, but uh, just to kind of learn about some of the communities and, and hear about some of the schools and, uh, you know, there's a lot of people that, that I've met here that talk passionately, passionately about where they live. And, um, you know, so we're excited to kind of, to kind of explore it and settle in and, and become part of the community. You guys all good? All right. Beautiful.